Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Top 10 Things You Didn't Know About Safajiva March 2020 edition. That's right, it's coronavirus time, and I am sitting around coming up with all the things you didn't know about Safajiva. I really think some of these tips are going to surprise you guys, because this is stuff I only learned from fighting Safajiva and dealing with his mechanics and his rewards for a while. Let's go ahead and get started. Tip number one is going to be based on some research I was doing about soloing Safajiva. Yes, you can solo Safajiva. There are a number of speedrunners who have done it. Most notably, they've done it with the light bowgun using elemental ammo setups like the aqua shot, which is a Safajiva weapon, I understand. According to Google, one of the things you guys search the most is how do I solo Safajiva? And the truth is, there is really no easy way to solo Safajiva. There was kind of this rumor going around that you could use Plunder Blade to farm for Safajiva parts, and then you can turn these Safajiva parts in at the Elder Melder, and the Elder Melder has like Awakening Alchemy where the parts get turned into like a weapon, and then you can use Sealing Alchemy to take the weapon and turn that into Dracolite. First of all, that's very slow. <laughs> it's a very inefficient way to farm Safajiva. Two, the big problem here is you're not allowed to use Awakening Alchemy and Sealing Alchemy until you defeat Safajiva for the first time. So if you're not already pretty well equipped and skilled, you're just not going to be able to do this. So tip number one is kind of a myth buster. There's no easy way to farm Safajiva's parts solo unless you are a god of Monster Hunter with all of the good gear and a good strategy and plan for defeating him. Hey, you know, if you're really stuck, Maybe you really can just kind of copy a speedrunner and practice and practice and practice and make it. Uh, but don't expect to be able to get rich off a of plunder blade. You're not going to have access to Awakening Alchemy or Sealing Alchemy. Tip number two is actually pretty important. It's related to being a bit more efficient with your Dracolite. You want to save some Dracolite? Hey kids, want some Dracolite? So with the Elder Melder, when you were re-rolling your decorations, right? You can re-roll decorations at the Elder Melder. You know how every time you do that, it saves the game so that you can't save scum and it's really annoying because you don't get the decorations you want you spend all your materials and then you're sad guess what the smithy does not have that mechanic when you go over to him and you start spending your dracolite if you didn't get what you want you can just reset your game to a previous save point easy so just save your game turn off auto save save your game Reroll, reroll, reroll. You know, if you're trying to get like Teostra's technique or something like that, I don't know what you're trying to put on your weapon. You're trying to put on some skill. Just the other day, I was putting on the Tigrix skill because I was making a, you know, free mail secret build for a wide range setup. And I'm rerolling and rerolling and rerolling, right? So if you have to do that, save the game beforehand, turn off your autosave, and if you don't get what you want, just reset your game. Easy. You've saved all your Dracolite. Did you like that tip? You're welcome. Well, now I'd like for you to give me just the tip and hit that like button. It's just the tip though, and don't tell my wife. It's not cheating if it's just the tip. All right, so number three is gonna be interesting as well. This is also related to using your Dracolite more efficiently, but this one actually does involve the Elder Melder. Sealing Alchemy is this new thing where you take a Safajiva weapon that you don't need, and then you trade it in at the Elder Melder. And then yeah, you get Dracolite. You get a large Dracolite, which by the way, large Dracolite is really nice. Well, did you know if you were to upgrade your Safajiva weapon up to level 6 Awakening before trading it with the Elder Melder, you will get two large Dracolite. What? That means you're getting like double the reward for simply upgrading the weapon to level 6 once. You can't do this all the time, and if you are going to do it, be sure to use regular Dracolite. There's no point in using a large Dracolite in doing this, because then you will just be breaking even. So you have to use regular Dracolite, Take a weapon that's already like awakening level four or five. You're going to have to try and awaken it to level six. Be sure to just use whatever the biggest upgrade you can give the weapon is. Okay, so go for it. This will give you more efficient rewards when you're doing sealing alchemy. Hot mama, those are some good tips. I mean, you don't even have to learn how to farm Safajiva efficiently if you just don't spend as much Dracolite. Tip number four should have been in my video, the top 10 things you're doing wrong against Safajiva. I just recently released that if you haven't seen it. And basically, I was giving advice on things you shouldn't be doing. Well, here is one more of those. Stop rotating around Safajiva when you have his aggro. Okay, so if he's got the little red beam on you, congratulations, you have his aggro. If you rotate, he rotates with you. This is extremely annoying for anyone who's trying to cut the tail 
or in general, just trying to attack any body part, right? Because he's huge. He's a giant monster. And when he rotates, the body part you were attacking, it's now like a mile away. So if you have his aggro, you need to stop running around like a little boot, you know, and you need to stand in front of him like a man and take it. And if you can't, somebody who is a man needs to take the aggro away from you. And you can do that by simply grabbing onto his head and then flint shotting him with whatever you have. Okay, so you flint shot him and the aggro trans transfers. And then you want to make sure you keep him standing still and facing one direction as much as you can. Don't run to the left and the right because you're scared. Stay right in front of him. If you have somebody working on Safajiva's head, it's probably a good idea for them to grab the aggro because they're going to keep him facing forward in one direction and not rotating. Tip number five is short and sweet. We know that Safajiva has a grab that basically drains all your health and then gives you fire blight. Well, guess what? If you bring your fire resistance over 20, this of course nullifies all fire blights. And what that means is you survive the move with like one HP, I'm guessing, just one. And that's great. You can actually eat for elemental resist large at the canteen, and this will give you the additional elemental resistance that you need. You know, it kind of helps in general with defense if you're tired of being fire blighted throughout the fight. It's kind of annoying being constantly fire blighted. Uh, but on the other hand, you do lose out on a bit of damage by not taking attack up extra large. So, you know, it, it's, it's a preference thing. I, I think I would think about it. He, he's not the most difficult fight. He's not like extreme behemoth in my eyes. Tip number six is one of those tips where you only notice it when somebody else doesn't know about it and then it's the worst thing in the entire world. Tip number six is you can skip the cutscene at the beginning of the fight. <gasps> what? Yeah, that's right. Some people still don't know this stuff. The game doesn't necessarily tell you. Somebody kind of has to, you know, tell you or you have to test the buttons. You can skip the cutscene at the beginning of the fight, hit the start button. All players need to hit start in order for this to work. Sometimes you will get a player who is a wise guy and he doesn't click it because maybe he's like scratching his, you know, or he's eating popcorn. But sometimes you get people who really just don't even know that you can skip it and it just makes me want to lose my freaking mind. Tip number seven. When Safajiva is draining energy out of the ground, and you'll know what I'm talking about, this one's real obvious, you can claw onto him and you will not be thrown off and you can soften him. Everyone knows this tip. What a lot of people don't know is that it's not the roar that's catching you and, and making you stumble. It's actually something called wind pressure. You're getting hit by wind pressure when he uses that move and you can roll through the wind pressure. So if you didn't happen to clutch claw him in time or you don't feel like clutch clawing him, which doesn't always make sense, but occasionally it makes sense, like maybe using a light bow gun, you can just iframe through the wind pressure with good timing. Tip number eight, if you don't deal enough damage to Safajiva, he wipes you out in stage three with a double supernova. The first one wipes out all the little rocks that you hide behind. The second one just kills you. Of course, you cannot far cast out of it, so you're all dead. Most of you guys already knew this one. It's basically a damage check. You deal enough damage, and then he shoots the sky, and all the little rocks fall down, and then you have a new shield to hide behind, right? Well, here's something some of you may still be getting used to or may not even know. You can use flash pots to knock Safajiva out of the sky when he's jumping up to use his supernova. I know it's got a real name. I can't remember the name of the move. Anyways, this is useful because if you're lacking damage and you shoot him out of the sky, he falls down, this gives you one last chance to get enough damage on him so that he uses the move that brings the rocks down. And I could be wrong, but it might even give you a chance to use a far caster before he jumps up in the sky to use the move again. All right, so I'm willing to wager that a lot of you guys watching this video already knew tip eight. You already knew about the whole, oh, there's a damage check, oh, you can flash him when he's flying. You already knew that. But here's one you didn't know. Tip number nine, you can be suffering from success in stage three, where you're doing so much crowd controls and maybe damage on Safajiva that he never gets to call in more rocks before going into the second Nova. That's right. Suffering from success. You've double nova yourself because you're playing too well. So he, he jumps up, he supernovas, he breaks all the rocks, and then you crowd control him, crowd control him, crowd control him. He never calls the rocks in, jumps right back up and wipes the team. <laughs> you played yourself. So that's tip number nine. Be sure to give him a chance to shoot down more rocks. That means you can't just fully crowd control him all the time. And finally, for tip number 10, did you know in stage three when you begin, uh, some of you guys already knew this, there's walls. There's walls. There's no traps yet. There's walls. And what's interesting about the walls is you can actually use them to get a lot of aerial damage 
on Safajiva. Uh, you can use your wall attacks. Some weapons are able to like run up the side of a wall and use a special attack that does extra damage. The bow, for example, the sword and shield, for example. The lance, not really the lance. Why would you ever use the lance? The lance is, no, I'm not going to get into that. Anyways, that is the last tip on the list. I saved the worst for last. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to leave a comment and a like. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.